On the last episode of Hops Gnarly Brewing, I looked back on everything I learned from examining each component of a hazy IPA, and I made my best batch yet. I'm not ready to stop experimenting, but I'm definitely ready to shift my attention to a new question. This week, I want to know what happens when you treat ale yeast and lager yeast the same. The pseudo lager is a trend in homebrewing that involves using kvake or other clean fermenting ale yeast to ferment a lager grain bill at room temperature to make a super clean lager like beer and honestly, I find these types of trends to be kind of annoying. One of the things I like most about any craft is attention to detail. Controlling fermentation variables is part of the fun for me. Plus, ale yeast won't deliver the same character as lager yeast, right? What about that little hint of sulfur? If you're a pseudo lager fan, don't worry, I'll have my foot in my mouth soon enough. Now, let's make some beer. For this beer, I'm using my trusty local grocery store spring water and I'm adjusting the water profile using gypsum, calcium chloride, epsom salt, and canning salt. I'm using a default water profile in Beersmith called Yellow Dry. For the grain bill, I'm keeping things super simple with 90% Vienna malt and 10% dextrin with a target original gravity of 1046. Let's get it going. I'll keep mashing this in until everything is nice and saturated and then I'll give it about 10 minutes to settle before starting the recirculation and a one hour timer. We've been hanging out at our mash out temperature for about 10 minutes now. Time to yank these grains and get our boil started. We're up to a full boil and it's time for some hops. Here's 50 grams of the Pink Boots blend from Yakima Chief and our one hour timer starts now. While the boil chugs along, I'm prepping the fermenters. More beer sent over this Firmzilla with the collection jar and I want to see how it compares to my Firmzilla All Rounder. Both fermenters are pressure capable, making pressure transfers and pressure fermentation super easy to do. The biggest difference I've noticed so far is the height. The Firmzilla is much taller than the All Rounder, so it's definitely not going to fit into a mini fridge or small fermentation chamber. It's been 45 minutes and it's time for the next hop addition. Here's 25 grams of pink boots and it's also time to start sanitizing the plate chiller.
15 minutes and it's time for a flame out addition. Here's 25 grams of pink boots. Now, it's time to chill this beer down and get ready for fermentation. As I get close to pitching temperature, I'll oxygenate the wort with pure oxygen and then split the batch between the two fermenters. The fermenter on the right is getting Imperial Dieter, a German ale yeast, and the fermenter on the left is getting Imperial Harvest, a versatile lager yeast. And remember, the question I'm trying to answer is what happens when you treat ale yeast and lager yeast the same? Lucky for me, the suggested fermentation temperatures overlap at 60 degrees Fahrenheit or 15 and a half Celsius. So that's exactly where I'm gonna keep the temperature. Now, all I need to do is wait. It's been a few weeks since brew day and I'm ready to give these beers a taste. On the left, we have the lager yeast, Imperial Harvest, which landed at a final gravity of 1010. Despite using gelatin in both of these kegs, neither one is super clear yet, but I like the pale amber color. This one smells like crackers and sweet malt, and it has a minor sulfur note. For a lager, it has a lot of esters going on. The flavor is just a bit fruitier than what I would expect, and it makes it hard for me to describe it as clean. The beer on the right is the ale yeast, Imperial Dieter, which landed at a slightly higher final gravity of 1012. This one has maybe half the aroma as the other one, but when you get in there, I smell some of the same crackers and sweet malt. It tastes a little sweeter than the other, which makes sense with the higher final gravity, but I'm not getting any of those esters here. It's nice and clean and straight to the point. The weird part is that it doesn't have enough hops to make it a pale ale, so honestly, it tastes more like a lager. Annoyingly so. If the target was to make a fest beer or something like that, this ale yeast did it better under those conditions than the lager yeast. So I guess when you treat ale yeast and lager yeast the same, the one better suited to those conditions makes the better beer. And sometimes that means a lager made with ale yeast is your best path to making a great beer. This episode of Hops and Gnarly Brewing was made possible by these awesome partners. If you like this video, let me know in the comments and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'll see you again soon.